we are just at the early stages of proof of concept studies. We have probably something like eight to ten years of development work before we get to first in man use. Uh, we've been able to demonstrate efficacy in small animals, in rodents, mice, and rats. We still need to work out pharmacokinetics, elimination, safety, and some formulation issues before we're ready to try this in people. Well, there were two key problems with the prior blood substitutes, which are called hemoglobin-based oxygen carriers, or HBOX. Most of them were naked versions of hemoglobin, which is outside of a red blood cell. Hemoglobin inside of a red blood cell works very effectively. It captures oxygen well in the lung and releases it to tissue. So there's a modulated oxygen affinity. This doesn't happen when the protein is outside the cell. Also, hemoglobin traps and consumes an important vasodilator molecule called nitric oxide, which keeps blood vessels open and in a relaxed state. When hemoglobin is released from red cells or outside red cells, it will trap that molecule and cause vasospasm. So the other blood substitutes were effective at improving oxygen content in blood, but were not as effective in releasing it effectively, in releasing it to tissue where it was needed, and they also caused blood vessels to constrict inappropriately, limiting even oxygen delivery by normal red cells. So while they looked reasonable in preclinical models and early phase one trials, there were problems in the late stages of the trials and they seem to be associated with heart attacks and strokes. Because there's been significant advantages or improvements in synthetic chemistry and nanomedicine, we've been able to encapsulate the same molecule with a suite of small other small molecules that allow us to imitate the behavior of a red blood cell. So we have a artificial cell with hemoglobin and other molecules in it that modulate oxygen affinity, prevent oxidation of the iron so met hemoglobin doesn't form. The shell is designed to retard interaction between nitric oxide and the hemoglobin, but not the diffusion of oxygen. And it can be freeze dried, so it can be stored at ambient temperature for extended periods and then just reconstituted with water at the point of care. The indication that we're pursuing right now is use where there really is no blood availability. That's out in the field or in austere settings. And uh, we'd like to be able to push transfusion out into those settings. Once that efficacy is established, we imagine we'd be able to use it in short-term settings, such as in the operating room, priming bypass circuits. Because it's so small, perhaps delivering oxygen beyond obstructions or during vascular procedures like cardiac catheterizations or angioplasties, or to preserve organs that have been explanted prior to transplant. Right now, the viability of an organ, once it's been removed, is limited by its oxygen delivery lack. If we're able to deliver oxygen, we can keep a heart or a lung, a liver or a kidney alive for a longer period, extending the range of, a, of the donor pool. So there's um, a number of other niche uses that we're looking forward to, but we're focusing right now on trauma resuscitation.